Hey everyone, Matt here from Docs Running, and today we're going to do a full review of the Brooks Ghost 16. So this is Brooks' standard daily neutral training shoe. It's been on the market for quite some time. It's a fairly standard classic shoe that a lot of people know really well. The newest version hasn't changed too much. There's definitely been updates. There's a new sole, new upper, but it's still a Brooks Ghost. So people that have run in this shoe before just know it's going to be similar. Don't freak out too much. But people that haven't chosen or haven't run in this before, this might be a shoe that you might want to check out if the following things are things that you like. So let's talk about that. First, coming in at specs, men's size 9 is coming in at 9.8 ounces. Women's size 8 is coming in at 8.8 ounces. The stack height is, I'm seeing some slightly different reports out there, but the most recent one I've gotten is 35 and a half in the heel, 23 and a half in the forefoot for a 12 millimeter drop. It's one of the rare 12 millimeter drop shoes out there. That is very, very noticeable. There is new foam here called DNA Lot version 3. It's a nitrogen injected EVA foam. Um, and it's a new blend that Bricks have been using. It feels fairly similar if just a teeny bit softer than the the latest version the 12 millimeter drop and the classic small heel bevel and a little bit of posterior flare does make this shoe feel a little clunky at the heel there is a nice crash pad here but it's still just it feels like a 12 millimeter drop shoe if that's something you want transitions fairly well into the midfoot the forefoot actually has a, a solid amount of flexibility and a good forefoot rocker so very smooth transition up here just be aware there is some toe spring here and it does make the shoe feel a little bit short so be aware and we'll talk about the fit thing in just a second overall shoe is on the slightly more flexible side a little more stiff in the rear foot what is nice is even though this is a neutral shoe it does have some mild guidance methods so sidewall on the medial heel sidewalls that you can see on the lateral heel midfoot there is also a small medial sidewall on the forefoot so if you like those kind of things great i will be honest that because it kind of comes the last minute this has caused me some blistering so just be aware if that's something you're sensitive with with sidewalls that might cause you a little bit of issue what is nice though sole durability has been really really good the midsole the midfoot's a little bit wider which kind of adds that hey this isn't a stable neutral shoe but it's it's not an unstable shoe and it does a really really good job of that durability has been really good i've got 30 miles on my pair just a tiny bit of wear nothing major so it's doing great so far so sole is nice it's not the softest shoe out there. The heel is definitely very cushioned just because of the massive amount of foam. But the midsole material is kind of more classic Brooks. It's consistent. It's nothing crazy new. I find when I walk in the shoe, it's actually very soft and I like it. But when I run with the more force, I think the sole kind of bottoms out. So it feels just slightly firm to slightly soft. So you want that consistent ride, just a little bit of softness. They're just going to work really well for you. If you want something really soft or really firm, this may not be the best thing for you. But, you know, that, that's what you're looking for. That's something to pay attention to. So finally, moving on from that into the upper, the upper does fit slightly wider. The midfoot and the uh, tongue is not gusseted, so it, there's not a really great secure fit. I have had to lace lock this to get a secure fit, and I get a little bit of sliding, which there's a wider midfoot, which is or it's a forefoot that's really, really nice, but the toe box also tapers, plus the toe spring makes the shoe feel a little bit short. So if you're between sizes, you might want to go a half size up. For me, I stuck with true to size, and I did get some blisters with the tapering and and that medial sidewalls on the forefoot. So just be aware that might be something to pay attention to. And you do get a little bit of sliding unless you really lock this down well. The heel counter is very stiff in this shoe. If that's something you like, that's something you're gonna want. If it's not, just be aware. I have had a little bit of pressure on there. It's been a bug me a little bit, but I'm somebody that's sensitive to that. Finally on use, this is a daily training shoe. It's meant for easy miles, long runs. It can also be used as a walking shoe if this stuff kind of fits for you. It's not great for workouts. It can handle some up-tempo stuff. I've done some far like I've done some like mild up, up tempo efforts. It can do that. But after that, you're going to want something faster than this. This is for logging miles, or I got to give David credit because he always says this, a, a daily training workhorse. So if that's something you want, this might be a really, really good shoe. It's still priced really, really well. Same price last year, I think 140 bucks. So fairly durable, gets the mileage done. It's simple, consistent. And as I said before, if you've liked this shoe before, you're going to like it again. If you're new to it and you like the higher drop, if you like a little bit more width, the, the, the toe box going that way doesn't bother you then this might be a shoot that you might want to check out.